Okay, so this is a response video to your response video, and uh, thanks for uh, making a response to begin with. I appreciate the feedback. Uh, a lot of good comments, a lot of good points. Um, I'd like to address a couple of them. Uh, the first one, uh, you corrected me on my terminology, my uses of uh, rejection. I defined atheism as the rejection of mythical deities, and you pointed out that, oh, well, it's, it's not, we're not rejecting it, all right? We're not sort of refuting it. We're looking at the evidence, and we're examining... Um, what uh, supernatural claims there are and seeing if there's any proof of them. And um, it's not just an outright rejection. It's, it's carefully studying, weighing, and observing. It's looking at the observable world and trying to discern what it is. And um, you're correct on that. Uh, atheism isn't atheism because it's just rejecting deities. That would imply that they are somehow more real than they really are. And um, so, yeah, I give, I give you credit on that. Um, so let me rephrase. Uh, it's not so much of a rejection of mythical deities, but um, seeing atheism is uh, basically a disbelief in them because they don't exist. There's, they've looked at the evidence, they've weighed, they've weighed the evidence, and there simply is no credible data to support uh, these belief systems, uh, the belief in the supernatural. I can agree with that. In fact, um, I think spirituality and atheism are uh, actually they can be used together. Uh, you can be a spiritual atheist if you wanted. But th that's more into the second point. Let me get to that now. Um, so, point two. You made the, um, the notation that uh, there's a difference between metaphysical and supernatural. And I totally agree on that. Um, let me just, you know, make that clear. I understand what you're saying. Uh, there's metaphysical being the non-physical or the uh, non-material without material form or substance. And then there's the supernatural, which is simply the, it's scientifically unaccountable, like miracles, as you said. And uh, I would agree on that point, too. Uh, I do. So, we have the metaphysical and the supernatural, and I believe that, at least in, in my experience, um, culturally speaking, I mean, the atheists I've spoken to and the communities I've spoken to tend to focus on the latter, uh, the supernatural, as the only definition of religion. But I think we can both agree that religion doesn't just have um, supernatural claims. Religion also has metaphysical claims, and it has um, an, that other dimension to it as well. And that is the, the aspect of religion and spirituality in general that I'm arguing um, should be uh, taken a closer look at. And in my experience, even though atheism healthy forms of atheism are as you have, as you have described as uh, carefully weighing evidence uh, a lot of the times at least in the circles I've, I've uh, spoken with they, they have been more dismissive of spirituality and reducing it to merely the claims of the su supernatural and I, and I get this a lot um, when I have a discussion about religion um, many times there, there's the immediate, the immediate response of do you believe in supernatural? Why would you want to believe in, in things that don't have any proof? And to me, there's sort of a, a disconnect, because what I'm trying to say is I'm not trying to support any kind of supernatural aspect to it. Um, in fact, that is just a matter of uh, faith or a claim or a belief that has nothing to do with what we can... Uh, there's no evidence for it, basically. I'm not talking about that aspect of religion or spirituality. Um, what I try to do is I, I try to get the other person to understand that I'm more of talking about the metaphysical aspects of religion, the the um, the, the ones that don't really need the supernatural claims, and they they do exist, and they're in every religion. Um, these are often labeled the more mystical or transcendent aspects of uh, religious religious uh, people or cultures or practices, and these often are called the mystics and the sages of. Uh, whatever sp per respective tradition that they're from. Um, so this metaphysical aspect to religion, I'm claiming, uh, needs to be looked at a little bit closer uh, instead of being lumped together with the supernatural. And that has been the case. Um, this mistake has been the case very often, more often than not, unfortunately. But to give a few exceptions, um, Sam Harris, in his last chapter of The End of Faith, has brought up these points, and he sort of said, like, look, um, I've been critiquing the belief in the supernatural as sort of a, a, a 
backwards primitive aspect of religion but it also has this other dimension religion has this other um, more intuitive dimension about our meta uh, metaf metaphysically speaking um, and let me get to that in the third point which is focusing on um, the metaphysical and you describe the metaphysical uh, more so as our emotions and our thoughts and our images and our feelings and our concepts um, this is the psychic or psyche dimensional aspect as you described I don't I don't know if you said psyche or psychic but uh, I've heard psychic dimension often described as not any any form of supernaturalism but just as the psychic realm of being the, the mind and its thoughts and images and emotions so you describe this as you know the psyche the psychic uh, and you also mentioned that, look, you can call this spiritual. If you want to call emotions and feelings and wonder and all this as an emotional experience, you can call it spiritual if you want. But that has nothing to do with the supernatural. And we have we can argue the point of what we'd like to call this aspect to our um, humanity. Spiritual, emotional, um, psychic, whatever you would like to call it. But um, I'd also like to raise the point that Carl Sagan actually mentioned this in this book, the varieties of uh, religious experience. Um, he basically makes a very similar point as you did, saying like, "Look, we have this, you know, this humbleness and this awe and this wonder of the universe. If you want to call that spiritual, go ahead. It has no need for any kind of supernatural aspect in the definition." Um, so, I basically, I basically agree with all of your points. Um, I would just like to take them another step further and sort of explore this aspect of this dimension to it. Um, so, if spirituality uh, is just this aspect of the human being that's contingent upon our brain and upon um, basically just our physiological makeup, if there's nothing supernatural about spirituality, um, then atheism generally speaking, at least contemporarily, and this is not the case for every atheist, but um, at least in mainstream culture and in um, popular communities, the dominant theme is the is the overall, uh, how, does, how to put it, the critique of um, the first part of religion, the supernatural. Um, for the most part, you find you find people just saying, look, there's no such thing as supernatural. There's no such thing as supernatural. You guys are being silly for believing in it. But I think there's sort of a discord between the, the two realms of thought um, because the re more religious people or more spiritual people say, like, look, I don't disagree with um, your claims and, and your beliefs here. I don't disagree that the su there is no such thing as a supernatural. But I have had some experiences which don't say to the contrary. In fact, I don't know what they are. There is this other part of the human experience, a spiritual experience. And um, this is part of our, the realm of the psyche or the psycho-emotional um, dimension to the human being. And it doesn't need anything supernatural in order to uh, exist. So I guess what it boils down to what I'm trying to say, um, there is the metaphysical and the supernatural. And religion, even though it's been critiqued, um, we often miss the metaphysical aspects to it. And let me describe just a few examples of what I'm talking about to clarify. Uh, supernatural meaning the belief, not belief, but the experience of this transcendence, this selflessness, this egolessness, nirvana, um, um, meditative experience, contemplative experiences, prayer. Um, and these are all categorized as being similar in the fact that they sort of transcend the self, and the ego dissolves, etc. These are just direct experiences. They, they, they really require no belief in gods or goddesses, no belief in nirvana, pure lands, heaven, or hell. Um, in fact, you might be able to say there is a spiritual dimension to the human psyche, which may be like a higher form of um, thoughts and thinking and feeling and and all that. It may be a, another realm of our um, mental dimension. If you want to call it the psyche, the psyche, then this is a higher realm of the psyche. It is another part of us, though. It's 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 based in reality, and uh, that's what I think I'm trying to pull, uh, drive at here. This experience. And uh, okay, hope to hear back from you.